Growing up in Whistler takes all shapes and forms. From strollers to skis, you'll find kids walking hand in hand with mountain life. Some are fortunate enough to ride into the resort as one of the lucky few who were born and raised here. Growing up in a mountain playground seems unfathomable to most. To others, it's a dream come true. Even if that dream only grants them a couple of years to sit amongst this resort community. Others are adopted from neighboring communities, youth drawn to mountain living. The mountains are both parent and playground, readying their children to leap out of life's gates fast and furious. They do what parents do best. They challenge and inspire. And not just in athletics, but music, dancing, and the arts in its many forms. What is it about our community that makes kids who they are? A fortunate few made in Whistler. So today, we are going to create an art project that shows how much we love where we live in Whistler. Right now what I'd like for you to do is pull out the white paper you have in your desk and your yellow paper and a pencil please. Let's get started. With a winter wonderland always watching from the window, students drew sledding, skiing, snowmen and basically anything requiring those frosty flakes. But snow doesn't just mean sports. Sometimes the chilly white acts purely as inspiration. Some kids like to play in snow while others love to paint it. It's winter and I like snowflakes and snow. There's something special about snow. Whistler kids can't get enough of it. At winter, our lake um, freezes and we have a sled and me and my sister go in it and then we tie it to Chloe's lead and she pulls us and then we get pulled and get really fast. <laughs> Tazara was too young to remember her first painting, but when kids were getting a $5 allowance, she was selling her paintings for $500. When I was five, I had an exhibition and I sold my paintings. I like to paint cows and pigs and fairies and winter scenes, people skiing down. We had this painting that everyone drew on and then my mom put all their names on and then we painted it in and then we put them in our schools for everyone to see. At three years old, Tazara entertained herself by watching her mother paint. Now the two work together. My mom does the backgrounds and then in Sharpie I do the animals and people and then me and my mom paint them in. My mom has art classes and I go to them and then I, we make color wheels so we know what colors go together and we paint a lot to learn how to control brushes and wash them and draw. I want to be an artist because it's really fun and I like drawing a lot. I want to make things. Like a hospital bed fit for a princess after she broke her leg in a skiing accident. I was in traction for a month, two months in a body cast, one month on crutches. My mom brought like a lot of fluffy and my friends gave me lots of stuffies and then I had string and I hung them up from the ceiling and I had a pink net over me. I was a pink princess. A pink princess who still loves the snow despite her fall. We have lots of fun on the mountain. The mountains are a neutral zone between parent and child. Peaks stretch out over the generation gap, bridging the two worlds with common interests and quality family time even kids want to be a part of. Some of the things I do with my family are go skiing and sledding and hiking, biking and swimming. It's really fun and nice because not a lot of, not a lot of families do get to spend a lot of time and their parents and stuff. I like spending time with my family because my mom's not just telling me like what to do and stuff like that. She's having fun with it too. Everywhere you turn in Whistler, fun and family time look down on the town, inviting residents to play, grow and dream. Mountains drew their way into every child's life, their world always overlooked by these great guardians. Whistler's special because of the mountains. That's what brings a lot of tourists to Whistler. And the people that live here really like the mountains because they get um, to go skiing every weekend. I do the mountains because um, there's a lot, Whistler isn't um, just one mountain like in the middle of a city. It's a valley with mountains all over it. 
all around. They're free in Whistler. They can ski, snowboard on the mountain, and they don't have to care about anything. They can do whatever they like. Maybe not whatever they want, but kids do keep company with the mountains more than anyone else. When not at the gym, Max Horner is always worshipping their might. Just amazing being near the mountains and how healthy the lifestyle is here. I look at them as pretty much my family. I couldn't live anywhere else in the world without couldn't live without them. Born and raised in Whistler, the son of a professional ski patroller learned respect for these great peaks at a very early age. I find you should respect them. Like no littering, not going over the edge and just trying something absolutely insane because the mountain will bite back right at you. I think my passion for skiing comes from probably my parents because they just love the sport so much also. That love grew from family time to racing time when at 12 years old he joined the Whistler Mountain Ski Club. The Whistler Mountain Ski Club is a uh, training program for junior athletes ranging from pretty much 10 till you're about it's the oldest you can get, pretty much. Train on the mountain, train in the gym, dry land, uh, mental training, everything pretty much that has to do with ski racing. No time for partying. Max spends as much time on two planks as he can. Unlike a lot of other kids, I enjoy every aspect of the sport. I'm out, Whether I'm out there in the train park, jumping and throwing myself in the air and doing tricks, skiing powder through the trees with buddies, racing ski across or just training, I'm always loving it. Skier cross is what gets Max's heart racing the most these days. Ski racing is an individual time event, whereas skier cross, you're up against four people duking it out, racing the finish line, racing other people. You have the other people pushing you, and it's scary racing side by side, just thinking if I catch an edge or something, or if the guy in front of me catches an edge, we're, everybody's going down. Max's dedication to the sport is unprecedented. He won the Whistler Ski Club's Joel Ashton Award, recognizing his passion for skiing. But this passion is even more recognizable on the first day of skiing on Whistler Mountain. Me and my friends, we've been the people on the first gondola for the first few years, and it's just a great way to show how much we love the sport. This year, uh, it was just get up, get up. As soon as we got out of school, just run to the bottom of the mountain and camp out all night with all, all my closest friends and just have a blast. In Whistler, anticipating the first powder of the season is a bit like Christmas. Skiers and snowboarders line up halfway through Whistler Village for opening day. Opening day pretty much means just the first first day you're back on skis and it's pretty much, if you think about it, if you've broken your leg or something and you've been out for like three months, it's just so exciting just to get that first step back in. Saying kids in Whistler love skiing and snowboarding is an understatement. Who here likes to ski or snowboard? Wow. Ski jumping is really fun because you can just float through the air and do lots of tricks. I like snowboarding because there's only one piece and there's not two pieces like skis. And so you don't have to carry them and you don't really need to carry poles. This is in Boomer Bowl on Whistler Mountain near Harmony Chair. I jumped off a 17 foot cliff instead of rolling and then I flew, but that doesn't stop me from jumping off cliffs just makes me more careful. That's my sister, that's me, and that's my mom. And then those are just people that are skiing on the other, uh, like beside us. My dad's not in the picture because he's from Winnipeg, so he doesn't ski. And all three of us usually just go skiing on Sundays and that's when the football's on. So he just stays at home and watch football, and he's happy with that. Skiing isn't the only thing to do in Whistler. The all-season resort keeps kids splashing into fun all year round. This is my friends and me going swimming after a bike ride on my birthday. I drew um, myself playing tennis because tennis is one of my favorite hobbies to do. And um, I might add a bear or something in the background because bears are really special in Whistler. With nature at everyone's doorstep, the mountains create a happy nursery for kids to grow up in, and that happiness is contagious. People are really happy in Whistler because um, there's a lot of things to do, and it's out in nature, and it's not like noisy and stuff. If you went somewhere, you wouldn't run into this person that's really bossy. You would probably run into someone that would offer you their shoes if you didn't have any. Tourists also make it special because like, it's good that the tourists choose to come here and not like 
somewhere else in the world because it makes it so there's more fun. You get to meet new people and everything. New people as well as familiar faces who travel from neighboring communities such as Squamish, Pemberton, and Mount Curry. Logan and Kamana Bikati of the Lillooet Nation were born and raised in Mount Curry, a First Nations territory 30 minutes north of Whistler. However, the Lillooet's traditional lands historically extend into Whistler as well. The Lillooet Nation, yeah, it's just awesome because everyone's a native there. And you can go out and say hello to everyone because you know almost everyone in the town. There's a lot of traditional food gathering in Mount Curry. And Sometimes this sense of community is lost once they leave their home. All the non-natives, a lot of them don't really like us all so much. I don't know why. It's just you don't feel welcome when you're around them. On the mountain, everyone becomes one community. All the people are friendly. Like you can be just sitting, going up the chairlift, and you can meet somebody new just like that. Bang! The Lillooet Cousins are members of the First Nations Snowboard Team. The grassroots organization develops competitive Aboriginal snowboarders as well as certified instructors. The First Nations Snowboard Team helps out a lot. They do pretty much everything for us. They buy all our equipment, they give us summer training to go work out and get in shape for snowboarding. They give us a chance to compete. Pretty much this whole program just helps you out so much. And all they're asking for is your commitment. You have to have so much commitment, it's crazy. But it pays off in the end. Since the group's inception in 2004, the team has grown from 10 to 116 participants. Many have moved on to the BC Snowboard team with hopes of one day stepping on to an Olympic podium. It's actually a real honor to be on the team right now. The team trains year-round with many athletes such as Logan helping inspire recreational snowboarders to get active and develop healthy lifestyles. Today I'm going to be shadowing because there are so many kids that we ha they have to help teach up there. I just feel awesome knowing that I get to pass my knowledge on. Logan's the kind of person who likes to help out people when they're stuck. He helped me out a lot in the border cross. Now I can almost beat him. Um. <laughs> we still have a race to declare that yet. <laughs> Passion and hard work are paying off, hopefully in time for 2010. I think it's important for, for Aboriginals to be on the Canadian Olympic team because technically it was our land. It'd be nice for us to get included. And because we have talent too. We get underestimated. A lot too. Yeah. There is no shortage of talent in the sea to sky, and hopefully the coming 2010 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games will showcase our amazing kids. Already children are cuddling up to the Olympic spirit. Some want to spectate, others participate. I like the Olympics because they uh, made really cool stuffies. I had a favorite right away, and this is my favorite, Mega. I'm excited to watch the skeleton moose and bobsledding because I get to go visit the track tomorrow. If I could do a sport, I'd probably do the ski across. How come? Because like, I like getting air on my skis and ski across is jumping and racing, my two favorite things. Maybe not in time for 2010, but already the dreams are in motion. I want to be in the Olympics. That's my dream. Lisa has many dreams. She skates, plays the piano, and excels in academics. She is a rising star in so many different ways. She landed a position on the BC figure skating team, and thanks to her training with the Whistler Skating Club at Meadow Park Sports Centre, jumping from a single to a double and soon to be a triple axle is only a short glide away. I've been skating for six years, like gliding on the ice and like doing all the tricks and stuff. but. I have to work hard to be able to do what I want to do when I grow up. I skate six times a week. And even that isn't enough. We don't get as much ice time as other places like Vancouver. So we, I end up like having to skate with like some of the younger kids. But other than that, we have like great coaches and it's really fun. 
Lisa can nail an axle or double sow cow, but her toughest trick is juggling her athletic ambitions with school. My dad thinks I can skip as much school as I want and do sports, and my mom thinks school's first. But, um, well, I just have to make sure that I keep up my grades to be able to do what I'm doing. I work hard trying to be able to keep up in school. Keeping up means straight A's in all of her subjects, and if that wasn't enough, there's also her piano. With nothing in Whistler further than a 10 minute drive, piano, skating and school can schedule itself into one day. I started piano when I was five years old, and I've been doing it like more than skating actually. I really like doing different pieces like classical music and stuff are my favorite. In grade five, I got a silver medal for the top grade in BC. It's hard to fit piano in with skating, but I try practicing at least five days a week. Um, like after skating sometimes, and especially during the weekend because I don't do much then. Believe it or not, this 12-year-old is, well, a 12-year-old despite her accomplishments and finds time to be active with her friends and family. And more often than not, these activities require snow, something the kids love almost as much as they love the mountains. Hi. I like snow because they can make they can make groomed runs, they can make they can make jumps. To me, snow means s sledding in the backyard, skiing, having a snowball fight. I like eating snow. We play around in the field and we built snowmen and we built snow forts. I think it's really cool because the snow in Whistler is about up to your knees and there's barely any snow in China. For Jake Tabor, Whistler was love at first snowfall. I just remember um, being in the classroom and l looking outside and there's these th there's this, this light snow falling outside and I'm just sitting there in awe, like glued to the desk. and. I, I, I can't look at the teacher, I'm just staring there for 15 minutes. The former city boy only saw snow twice before coming to Whistler. I was born in Los Angeles and um, I moved to Florida, then I moved to Hong Kong, then I moved to Singapore, then I moved here. It's because my dad is in the hotel business. This is the longest I've ever stayed in the place, four years. Even though the jet setter traveled to all corners of the globe, the little town of Whistler opened up a whole new world for him, one the whole family could enjoy. Before, I, I really didn't get, get a chance to get that much involved in sports. But since there's so many here, I just, I've gotten involved in hockey, skiing, running, golf. Whether goaltending or skiing, Whistler has inspired new terrain for Jake in many ways. Looking out on the mountains, he discovered a passion for writing. Whistler's grand landscapes began penning themselves into short stories. In my stories, I write quite a bit. There's quite a few nature scenes. This is um, kind of a little, a little setting um, that the two main characters come to. All right. As the two crested over the mountain pass, a beautiful scene was instantly stretched out below them like a painting on a table. The stony mountain peaks, capped with numerous patches of snow, towered above, while at the basin's base, a um, little town flourished, the tiny huts scattered around like pebbles thrown on the ground. There, there's so much beauty up there, so much natural beauty. It really in inspires me for some of those scenes. But even if this perfect world seems to come from the pages of a storybook, there must be something, one thing, he would change. It, it, it's almost perfect. I, I mean, of, of course, maybe. No, there's just... There's nothing I can think of. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Okay. Spring Creek Elementary School students couldn't agree more. Nothing because it's a really great community. I wouldn't really want to change anything about it. Um, nothing really because I really like it how it is already. I'd change about having no drugs and alcohol and um, making the mountains bigger. Um, I don't really know. There's nothing really bad about Whistler. <laughs> yeah, Whistler is <laughs> good. <laughs> I would change the um, trails to more and more biking trails because if um, there are going to be more and more and more cars, 
and there's going to be more pollution in Whistler in the future, so it's better to bike or walk. There should be snow every day instead of just in winter, and that your birthday is every day. Mountain biker Alex Pro already got his wish. A few years ago I would have said the foam pit, but now we already have it. The foam pit is part of an indoor mountain bike training facility. The Air Dome ensures pro mountain bike riders like Alex Pro continue to train even after the snow falls. We're at the Air Dome right now, and uh, as you can see, there's like a foam pit right there, and then uh, in the back, there's a vert wall, and then there's like a box jump, and here's some quarter pipes and the rolling and everything. It's pretty much everything I need to compete in the summer. It's the Air Dome in the winter and Whistler Mountain Bike Park in the summer that keeps Alex in the pages of mountain biking magazines year round. I see Whistler definitely helping me in my sport because, well, Mount, Whistler Mountain Bike Park is the best mountain bike park in the world. Like, I, I don't think you'll find anybody that disagrees with me. Having amenities so close to home has really paid off for this 16 year old rider, including performances at one of the biggest mountain bike festivals in the world, Whistler's Crankworks. I had about the best crankworks ever this year. Uh, I came six in the slope style, and I, I surprised myself, frankly. You know, I, uh, I did some things that you know surprised other people too. It was here where Alex mastered the world's biggest surprise. He became the youngest rider to ever land a double backflip in the world in Leo Gang, Austria. He perfected the trick earlier that year on the soft foam landing at the Air Dome. I have no idea where the sport's going to go. But, uh, you know, I just kind of see myself like riding and just having fun and, and uh, you know, making like a career out of it. A career made possible by the town he was born and raised in. Every mountain bike magazine out there has done a profile on Whistler at least once. So, I mean, like, it's just, it's like a big name in the mountain biking world. You know, when you see like a picture, like in like a, in like a magazine, it says like Whistler's own, like Alex Pro. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm from Whistler. There is no shortage of pride when the kids talk about their mountain home. I'm proud that we have all these beautiful mountains and there's not much violence in the town. Like there's not as many shootings as you see in Vancouver these days. We could just go outside every day and not worry about anybody coming and hurting us or stuff. Well, I'm proud that it's like not noisy and it's out in nature. I think Whistler should be most proud about the mountains because there's no mountains like Whistler anywhere else in the world. Whistler Mountain is, I don't know how to put this, but awesome. <laughs> yeah. Growing up in the mountains is awesome. At age three, Allie Wake moved from Banff to Whistler. She lived for mountain life, but they had different plans for her don't really spend a lot of time at home anymore. You kind of just run in, you grab your dance clothes, and you come down to the studio. So down here is where I live. Dance in Whistler originally meant taking classes in a school gym. There were no bars, no mirrors, no community. Now dancers at Soul Function Dance Studio finally have a place to call home. I'd probably be most proud of just this studio and how even though we just opened three and a half years ago, it's just come so far. It's like having a second family basically. So far that now gold medals aren't just given in sports in Whistler, kids are now realizing the potential to have a career in dancing and the first step begins with dance at a young age. We're working on it here in Whistler, Heather and Cody have started kind of introducing us into the professional world of dance and showing us what it's like to not just be competing and putting on shows for our parents and to actually be hired to put on shows. Ali loves to perform. Most of all, she loves passing on that joy to others. I've got seven little girls right now taking a just intro to dance class, so it's everything. It's jazz and tap and ballet and hip hop. I love just being seeing how happy they are when they learn something new, they master something, they can do their step together, step touch, and just seeing them kind of grow in their love for dance. I'd really like to continue dancing. I don't really know where I'm gonna go if I go to university. I will hopefully keep dancing and maybe even become a dance teacher. Or we'll see. <laughs> Because Whistler now has a professional dance studio, Ali can make a living teaching right here in Whistler. 
I love Whistler. I'm so glad to be lucky enough to have grown up here. I love, especially at our school, just because it's so intimate. It's only, you know, 300 kids, so everyone knows everyone. It's so great that everyone has, like, the same interests. Everyone either skis or snowboards, pretty much. I only know a couple people who don't. Whistler is an outdoor mecca of everything mountain. The rocky summits buried in snow and ice beckon adventure seekers, but more than just lifties reside here. My dad's an architect for Murdoch and Company. My dad works for Zip Trek Eco Tours, and my mom works at the Delta. My dad uh, has a his own construction company, and he in um, in his spare time. Uh, he's a ski instructor. My mom cleans houses and my dad works in the Callaham building the Olympic um, jumps. My dad's a famous ski coach and my mom works for Brian Adams and Michael Bublé and stuff like that. My dad is the fleet maintenance manager on Whistler Blackcomb, so he's in charge of fixing anything with the motor. What does mom do? and my mom's a teacher. Whistler is a vibrant community of 10,000 people who do everything from teaching in a classroom to writing music. They never gave her a chance. Living in Whistler and trying to be a recording artist at the same time, it's tough because all the recording studios are in the city. So there's a lot of commute, but it, I mean, it's not a big deal anymore. Luckily, my parents are around and I can just go to sleep and wake up in the city. The grade 12 student travels down Highway 99 for voice and piano lessons every week. But here in Whistler is where she got her first big break. Everything started to get going when um, I performed at a Celebration 2010 performance at Millennium Place and this lady came out of the crowd and was like, you have to meet my friend, he can, he can probably help you out. And it turns out that that friend was Zach Werner, the, the mean judge from Canadian Idol. The result was Warner producing Ali's first self-titled album on EMI Canada Records. She she was only 15 years old. From that, I like, I started, everything started kind of coming together. I hadn't got more gigs, more people started saying things and, um, and I got more connections. The young mountain girl performed at after parties at the Juno Awards and the Toronto Film Festival. She now plays weekly sets for the martini clinking crowd at the esteemed Four Seasons Resort in Whistler. She also represented BC at a cultural tourism festival in China. We played in this stadium for 60,000 people. It was on TV for 90 million people. It, and Jackie Chan played at the same thing. Now, all grown up at 17 years old, Ali is working once again with industry producers who have sold more than 40 million records. I was writing with these four guys in the city, Shred Records, Banana Tunes, and the four of us would just sit in a, in a room and write all day and we put together these three really cool songs. We were sending out the songs to like LA and New York and, and Asia and England. No matter where her music takes her, she hopes her music will bring her back to the place where she got her first big break. I see myself ending up in Whistler. I don't know if I'll stay in Whistler because, you know, you have to explore the world and, and kind of venture out of this bubble. Because growing up here, obviously, it's such a bubble. <laughs> it's a great bubble, but it's a bubble nonetheless. And um, so I need to experience um, new places and cities. And um, but I'll, I'll end up back here, pretty sure. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Most small town kids can't wait to move away from their hometown, but here in Whistler, kids are drawing themselves into the community right from the start and for years to come. So how does Whistler create these multi-talented, bright young stars who already value where they live at such a young age? Is it the activities they do? The people they meet? Or maybe the quality time they spend with their family? Some say it's the opportunities the town presents the creativity Whistler inspires, and the dreams mountain living begins. Growing up in China, Maggie could clearly see what others in Whistler often take for granted. The kids that grow up in Whistler, they're really, um, it's like, they're really talented. What is that? I think it's because um, they usually uh, do things with their friend and they have fun all the time, and they're they're feeling free all the time. Free to be who they are, with their proud parents always watching over them, reminding them how vast, great, and limitless that freedom will always be.
what to do another day living it all my own way another day this independence is okay Whistler is a place where I can really discover what I want to do for the rest of my life take a shower to wash away yesterday think what to wear Whistler is the place I like to play This so independence fun. is okay. Whistler is the greatest place in the world. Whistler is the best place to ride mountain bikes. Whistler is my home. And Whistler is a good place to live. Another day.